Ladies and gentlemen, as I live and breathe, a face we haven't seen for a while. And it's still the same face we saw before. It's the face of Will Durst. Hello, Will. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, we're here. It's another one of our Will Durst telethons. As I live and breathe. Uh, see this child? You can help this child if you'll just send money to the GoFundMe. Okay? Yeah. How much have you raised so far? You've raised quite a bit. Yeah, but I keep paying money out. Well, you're you're in that nursing home. Well, let's first of all let's set the table for people who don't know who you are. Okay, in the last two years. Okay, this guy is famous for having given a as a call of friend a person on the, who wants to be a millionaire the wrong answer. Yeah. Do you ever live that down? Uh, I get it once a month. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm just here to remind you. Because I sat there, I knew the answer. If he considered me a friend, he would have been, what, a millionaire or 500,000? 500,000. 500,000. He would have been a 500,000 heir. Okay? But uh, the question was, um, who directed... Who directed who Michael Jackson's bad video right and you told him Landis John Landis and the answer was Martin Scorsese yeah yeah I knew that you know I didn't know that but that's what you're most famous for uh you're also famous as I think a comedian right political a, a political pundit comedian says ha ha funny things about politics although there's nothing well i guess there is i mean are you missing things i mean do you miss being up there on stage because you've got such food for for comedy here with the with the like the the mccarthy thing you know yeah the mccarthy thing is setting a new bar for epic failure yeah yeah it was like uh y2k or kahoot tech <laughs> or Geraldo Rivera and the Capone Vault. Yes, very similar, very similar. And yeah. al also, also, you got to you got to admit that you're missing out on Santos. You know that's uh, that's a big comedy bit. I don't know. My people don't. Then I, Normal people around here have no idea who. They would think I was talking about George Soros. Yeah, no, George Santos. Uh, uh, is the biggest liar ever to run for office that we know of. That we know of. That we can prove. Well, because everybody who runs for office lies on some level, don't they? Yeah. 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 But his family died in the Holocaust. I mean... Yeah, he's half black. He's, he's Jewish. not really a Jew. He's he, Jewish. He's Jewish. Yeah, I said I'm Jewish. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was. Uh, he worked for Goldman Sachs. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, all those. It, it, it's it's a perfect storm for comedy. He was the first man on the moon. Yeah, exactly. So, what stories that you see on the news are are uh, begging for you to make comment about? Well, I want uh, Trump in jail. You you want to get Trump in jail? Yeah. And they keep coming close, but nobody's putting them in jail. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Do you think they're afraid? The backlash, or I don't know. What kind of backlash? I mean, yeah, there's going to be a backlash, but uh, that shouldn't stop you from uh, from charging somebody with something. Oh, and I don't care what, what they put them in jail for. Insurrection, treason... Uh, making false statements. Jaywalking. Yeah. You don't care. He, he wears his ties too long. What is uh, with that? Is it to hide his penis? Yeah, that part part of it's that. Part of it's uh that's why there's a little arrow shape at the bottom. Yeah, of there the is an arrow shape out on the top. There you, yeah, this is he has to identify where it is because you can't find it. He can't find it. Yeah, he can't find it. 
So anyway, let's talk about a few other things first before we get into any more of that. But uh, you, you're lying there. He's in bed. You've been lying there for three years, right? How many, yeah. How, how is it three now? Uh, since October uh, 2019. That was three years. So we're going towards four. Yeah. This at this point, this got to be pretty frustrating for you. And the last three years. I've had a stroke, a brain infection, and a broken hip. And they did nothing about the broken hip. At first, they thought that you just couldn't walk because of the stroke. And it turned right. out it was the hip that needed fixing. So now that the hip is fixed, has it improved your walking? Yeah. But I, I had to stop therapy. Yeah, and here's why. Listen to this. Yeah. Medicare. Medicare. They had a cap per year? No. Uh, they had a they had a cap on visits. Therapy visits. Therapy visits. Oh boy. I mean they there should be an exception for people. So, who, yeah. so if I uh, yeah, especially if you're showing uh, you know, success in the therapy. Yeah. Are you showing success in the therapy now that the hip has been fixed? I was. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't had any in December or January. So so in other words, the therapy gets you gets you to try walking and moving that leg and getting it mobile and getting your brain to tell it to walk too. Oh yeah, that's that's the main part. Yeah. But how how well were you getting along before that you had to stop because of uh, of? Uh, uh, I was making progress, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the money that you got from the GoFundMe is not enough to hang, take care of the therapist of a physical therapist for the no of the months? therapy. If I got it without Medicare, if I paid for the therapy itself, the therapists are four hundred and fifty dollars an hour. No kidding. Yeah, I never i I've, I've I've had physical therapists, but they never charge that. And I'm in New York. Yeah, but anyway, so when do you get to start the therapy again, according to Medicare? February. February. If if I can get a doctor to recommend it. Can you get a doctor to recommend it? I think so. We've asked a couple of doctors, and one of them said, "Yeah." Yeah. Okay. So, so February, you can start up again. Now, how long can you go before Medicare says, uh-uh, not no more? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. This is just, this is a, this is a cluster, what we, what we refer to technically as a clusterfuck. Yes. You know, you're lying I, in bed. You want to get out. You want to take care of yourself. You want to get better, but you can't until you have the therapy. And I got jokes. And you got jokes. Unfortunately, Biden is not good for jokes. How, how is he not good for jokes? He doesn't do anything. Yeah, you see, it's too, it's too easy. What I hate about when they go after Biden is how they go after him. They go after him and they joke about his age. You know? And, well, and he keeps reinforcing... You know, the fact that he might have uh, dementia. That he might have dementia, yeah. I don't, think he, I don't think he has dementia. I, I don't think he does, but he does things that could be interpreted that I, way. I'm 83, okay? I just turned 83. Oh, God. Hey, happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, um, remember when you were a kid, you used to go, how old are you? Well, I'm five and three quarters. How how old are you? I'm five and seven eighths. You know, yeah. you you would yeah. you would always try to project yourself towards the next age. Okay, the next year. Here until your birthday absolutely hits. You don't want anybody to say you're eighty three. You know, but anyway. So I'm eighty three. Yeah, but you don't look eighty three. Really? Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Anyway, um, uh, I'm eighty three. And I know what it's like to be 83, and, and he is going to, when he runs for office again, he's going to be 82. 
Okay, he's probably 80 now, I think. Yeah. So I know what it's like. No, they're be, both 79. Who's both? So uh, he's the same age as Trump. Yeah, Trump and Biden are both 79. Re wait, hold on a second. I'll ask the uh, Echo. How old is Joe Biden? Joe Biden is 80. He's 80. He was born on November 20th, 1942 uh, right. in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Echo, shut up. Now, Echo, how old is Donald Trump? Echo, come on. Echo, how old is Donald Trump? Donald Trump is 76. He's 76. He's Trump is 76. 76. Yeah. In New York City, New York. Ah. Yeah, he's 76. But I know what it's like to be 83. And he's going to be 82 when he runs again. And I just, you know, I, 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 I understand the problems of that age. And people make Ask jokes. Echo how old uh, Nancy Pelosi is. Oh, that's a good one. I think it's 82, but let me try here. Uh, I Echo, think it's old. Echo, how old is Nancy? Echo. I have to get her to respond. Echo. Come on, Echo. How old is Nancy Pelosi? Nancy Pelosi is 82 years old. 82 years old. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. She's a year younger than you. Yeah. If, right. I can, I can date a, a, if I dated her, I'd still be dating somebody younger than me. You know, but uh, my wife's younger than me. My yeah. wife's younger than me, but yeah. I'm still sleeping with an old lady. Yeah, well, I'm still, me too. I wake up in the morning and I go, my God, you know, I mean, it's like waking up with my mother, you know, so, uh, but, but, you know. Uh, for for her age, she's great. What she did, I'll tell you what happened. Your mother? No, my my mother looks great for her age, but she's a skeleton right now. Yeah. In a grave that I haven't put a tombstone on yet. What? How's that for a lousy son? You know. Well, you can't afford it. Well, yeah, I can't afford it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I was thinking of pulling my father's stone and then just putting one stone there that just said, you know. Ruth, uh, Alex and Ruth Schwarzman. And then in really big letters, parents of Alex Bennett. Sorry. Oh, I like that. Yeah, isn't that good? Yeah. But anyway, so I didn't put a... And then I found... Was it an arrow? Hmm? So you could be next to him. Yeah, well, I always had a, a, a guilt complex about not putting a, a tombstone on my mother's grave. And then I found out that a lot of people don't do that. You know, they didn't get around to it. It's too expensive these days. What, you're spending money on a dead person? That doesn't seem practical, does it? No. Well, it's like Bob Hope, when his wife asked him, do you want to be buried or cremated? He said, surprise me. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, so I, uh, you know, and, and, and as you get to that age, you get certain infirmities. I mean, I'm I'm forgetful. Part of it has to do with some medicine I'm taking, but I, I have a hard time sometimes remembering names. Like, uh, I, uh, you're Will Durst, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have a hard time remembering names. Uh, but then again, I always had trouble remembering names, but now in old age, it's just manifested itself and amplified itself. But the thing is that I, I feel sorry for Joe Biden because of his age, because I know what it's like. I know what you're going through. But when people go on television and make jokes regarding his age, I think that's rather inappropriate. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's ageist. Yeah, it's ageist. Oh. Yeah. He's got to get out of here. You miss Santa Claus. What is that going on? And we're getting ready for... Oh my gosh, it is almost April Fool's Day. It's almost the year of the rabbit. Almost. Oh. I huh. stop off at a party, somebody's going to think I'm Yiddish. I know it. You don't look Yiddish. Anyway, let's get back to our discussion. All right. Who, 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 was, who was that? It's a crazy person. A crazy person? They, yeah. just, they just let crazy people come into your room? He's one of the other residents. Uh huh. What's wrong with him? He thinks he's funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. 
So, um, uh, but you know, so I just, I, it is ages and, and it bothers me. And people tell those jokes without remorse, you know? To Jimmy Kimmel, who I like a lot, always pulling age jokes about Joe Biden. All of them. And I, it just bothers well, me. Well, we've never had a president this old. Yeah, but I don't think that that's something to make fun of. That's like making fun of the fact that he has a, if he had a limp, that he had a limp, you know? I, mean, I know, but his job is to make jokes about the president. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm not but saying... You use what you get. Yeah, but you don't... Uh, I don't know. I mean, if he fell down a flight of stairs coming out of Air Force One, I guess that would be funny, wouldn't it? It'd be yeah. funny but if he got up and walked away. If he wound up at the bottom of the stairs and was unconscious, then we wouldn't make jokes about it. No. Did you ever see the uh, the Gene Wilder version of uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. I forget what it's called. Uh, it was called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka, right. Yeah, yeah. And there's uh, the, the entrance of uh, Willy Wonka. Mm -hmm. is he, he comes out of the, uh, the factory and he's walking and he trips and he falls down and he makes a miraculous recovery and starts walking briskly away. Yeah. That, well, that was Gene Wilder said that's the only way that he would do the movie if he could do that as an entrance. Why? And I don't know. Because. I mean, it was funny. It was funny. Yeah. And it set him up as a trickster. Yeah. But but the thing is that, uh, it, you know, so, so I mean, don't make fun of Joe Biden's age. I think you can make fun of Joe Biden because he's just, he's, he's rather ineffectual, okay? Well, the joke that I'm working on right now is we had a black president, and then we had an orange president, and now we have a president who aspires to be beige. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that is funny. So, oh, so you got all these jokes probably welling up in your head. Percolating. Yeah, yeah. And, and you have no place to get rid of them. Now, you're writing again, aren't you? Yeah. Who are you writing for? Oh, you mean, am I writing for... Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm just writing for myself. Oh, okay. But weren't you writing for somebody for a short time there? I thought you were. Last time I talked to you, you said you were going to be writing. For no, somebody. I had uh, commentaries that I was doing for the Pioneer Baseball League. Oh, okay. All right. And it was about baseball, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is one of your favorite topics, actually. Yeah, baseball mysteries and politics. And politics. In fact... Uh, I remember that your lovely wife, Debbie, um, uh, uh, was always a major Giants fan. Just a great Giants fan. So I, I didn't know yes. it slipped over to you, but I guess it did, or it was a family she, project. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was a big baseball fan in Milwaukee. And then the Braves moved from Milwaukee to Atlanta. And I still hate Atlanta for that reason. You know who I always felt sorry for? I had a friend who, when he was a kid, grew up in Brooklyn, and he was the president of uh, the uh, the Dodgers Rooters Club. The kids got together and had this Rooters Club, and they rooted for the Dodgers. And all of a sudden, one day, they wake up and find out the Dodgers have vacated the premises. You know, they went to the, they went to uh, Los Angeles. And he never forgave the Dodgers. Never forgave them. You know, he said, he said he couldn't become a Yankees fan, but he couldn't abide by what the Dodgers had done to him. You know, and, and I'll tell you, kids who grew up in Brooklyn, I, I'm, I'm so sad that I never grew up in Brooklyn because they had a team, and that team lived in their neighborhood, okay? 
they walk the streets and there's somebody from the Dodgers walking down the other way, you know? Uh, and so they took it really to heart. They were the biggest fans of all time. And then all of a sudden they wake up a morning and they find out the Dodgers are going to California. And That's they, why when the Mets designed their uniforms, yeah, they took uh, the orange from the Giants and the blue from the Dodgers. Ah, okay. Well, see, what happened was, you know why the Giants wound up in San Francisco? They lost the bet. What? They lost I never, the coin flip. Uh, no, this is what I heard. Between O'Malley and Stoneham? No, what happened was, is the Giants were the third team in in New York. They were not a they you know you had the you had the the Yankees, Dodgers, Giants. Yeah, and the Giants were number three, and so their attendance wasn't terrific. And the Dodgers were going to go to California, but they realized that if they went to California alone, they wouldn't do as well because once you go across the Mississippi, there really wasn't any baseball or any major baseball team. So they figured they had to take somebody with them in, ah. or, in order to create the, you know. They needed a rivalry. In, and they needed the juice behind them. So uh, they paid the Giants to vacate New York and go to San Francisco. And now you had baseball on the West Coast. Okay? And then a lot of other people started coming. And now you got to think, is there a, there's a Phoenix baseball team? And, you know, they're... Baseball teams everywhere, west of the Mississippi, but they couldn't go alone, so they wanted to take somebody with them, and they took the Giants with them, and that's how we in San Francisco got the Giants, which turned out to be a pretty good team, you know, and then across the way we had the uh, the uh, Oakland A's, who moved from Kansas City. What were, were the, what were they? Were they the Kansas City A's? Well, originally they were the Philadelphia A's. Oh, okay. They moved from Philadelphia to Kansas City, and then Kansas City to Oakland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a couple of minutes left. I want to talk about the GoFundMe, okay? Because I think it's important that people know. Yeah, it it pays for my transportation to and from therapy, and it pays for uh, my my residing in the assisted living. Yeah, which is not cheap, I would imagine. You know. In San Francisco, you know. Well, I would say, I would say my mother was at the Jewish Home for the Aged. Jewish Home. The Jewish Home for the Aged, and it was 9000 a month. But what they did there is they took it out of the money she had, and once that was gone, they said, we don't throw anybody out, so the Jewish Home takes over having to take care of her. You know, so I'm a, I'm assuming that you're, you're paying at least seven thousand a month. Is that it? Am I right? Yeah, yeah, at least. Yeah, at least. So you know, uh, he's got to get this taken care of somehow, and the GoFundMe has supplied him with. Well, they got a stair. I mean, get get him up a staircase at home, and, they, and the rest I use for gum and candy. For gum and candy, and he bets on the on the Giants. Anyway, uh, and the horses. Yeah, and the horses. Uh, and, uh, you bring in a hooker now and then, right? Yeah, but uh, it's having diminishing she, results. Yeah, she's she's in the memory care uh. facility. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so really, what we're talking about here is the guy needs uh, some uh, some some bucks. Yeah, if you can help, help. If you can't, don't worry about it. Go to GoFundMe and just look up Will Durst. W, you see the, how it's spelled there on the screen, W-I-L-L-D-U-R-S-T. And uh, you can donate. Hey, 10 bucks is fine. You know, 20 bucks is better. 100 bucks is terrific. And, uh, oh, I'd say a half a million would be really nice. Wow. He'd send you a thank you note. Yeah. And that would be a lot of gum and candy. Actually, they'll roll him out to your house and he'll do his sit-down routine. You know, for for half a million. But anyway, go over there and just, you know, a couple of bucks doesn't doesn't hurt. And uh, it will help this fine guy who we really want to get on his feet. We want to get him back into comedy. 
and I want to get him back into comedy while I'm still uh, uh, and not at room temperature, you know. Uh, so do it. Go over to GoFundMe, Will Durst, and then you'll also see all the history of what's been happening. And and I hope to uh, come back on the Alex Bennett show. Yeah, well, let's do it again, okay, Will? Again. Okay, stick around. We're through here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our old friend, Will Durst. Thanks, Will. Bye. Go Diners.